Last night, Chicago passed 1,000 shootings for 2017. Is this a war-torn country? What are we doing? And we have to stop the violence. President Trump called out Chicago's troubles and campaigned on finding the solution. 12 days after inauguration, a pastor named Daryl Scott told President Trump he had one. Scott said top gang thugs in Chicago had personally contacted him with a message for the president. They respect you, they, they, they believe in what you're doing, and they want to have a sit down about lowering that body count. Daryl Scott is from Cleveland and doesn't have many contacts in Chicago, but he's got the attention of the White House. Because what's happening in Chicago should not be happening in this country. Scott and Donald Trump first met back in 2011, when Trump was flirting with the thought of being president. During the campaign, Scott introduced Trump at Ohio rallies and spoke at the Republican National Convention. God bless Donald Trump. God bless you and God bless America. He's now the CEO of the National Diversity Coalition for Trump, and his promise has made him the de facto Fix Chicago advisor. I figure, I don't know, I guess I, I sound and seen all types of death. I don't, leave it, I don't think it's even affect me like it should anymore. Torrance Cooks is a former Southside gang member turned community organizer. His cousin introduced him to a pastor named Luther McKinstry, who then introduced Cooks to Daryl Scott. It was his one-off conversation with Daryl Scott that turned into a promise to the president. Hey, T. Hey, hey. Come on in, man. Uh, what you doing, brother? People have been talking about saving Chicago for a long time. While he waited for Daryl Scott's meeting, Torrance Cooks organized his own town hall for the South Side. I never, out of all the years of my life, ever seen this many children die before their parents. We need to bring those young people that we're talking about into the room and talk to them. No actual gang members showed up. If it's hard to get them to show up to their own community center, what's going to happen when people from the Trump administration want to come and talk to them too? We don't need them there with the Trump meeting. We need to get something done from them out of the Trump meeting. Daddy just went home to be with the Lord, but it's going to be all right. It's going to be. It's going to be. Ah. Larry Tabrone is a pastor who does community outreach on Chicago's west side. He was skeptical of Scott's comments and decided to reach out to Scott, who then invited him to be a part of the meeting. Do you buy it that Trump is the guy who can change Chicago? I buy that he has the power to do it. If jobs are going to come to my city, I don't care if we wake Hitler up out the grave and Hitler says, I'm going to help the African-American community in the inner city of Chicago, I'm going to roll with Hitler. There are some people who'd say that it's about as likely that Trump is going to help black people in Chicago as Hitler rising from the grave to help black people in Chicago. Do you think that Trump has an accurate understanding of Chicago and that he can treat its people right? The police tried it their way. The preachers tried it their way. You know, we're praying our way out. We're laying on the ground. Uh, we're marching. That didn't, that didn't work. The plan was for Cooks to bring the South Side and for Tabron to handle the West. The two sides historically haven't been able to get along. The meeting was set for March 21st at a Marriott near the airport. Deep down, the majority of us want the same thing. We want the homicide rate to stop in Chicago. I personally, in 2016, did over 100 funerals myself. It's hard enough to get community leaders to work together. It's even harder to get the gangs to. It no longer looks like the organized crime of the 80s and 90s. The original leaders are dead or in prison, and gangs have fractured into cliques, fighting bitterly for money and territory. Why, every day, are you carrying that around with you? It ain't safe. You don't know who to trust or who not to trust. If you leave the house without this, it's like... Killed. It's like you, 
you basically said she had fucked my life. You know what I'm saying? So when you wake up in the morning, when do you first grab that? So when you put on your clothes, it's like putting the clothes on. How you bend out to tie your shoe? How you go in the bathroom to wash your face and brush your teeth? That go on your hip like you putting your belt on. The last thing you doing is worried about the police. I'd rather do a few years in the penitentiary than life in a cemetery. You know what I'm saying? Birdman and Little G are gangster disciples on Chicago's West Side. He's doing a lot better than when I first got out the hospital. I wish each one of my bullets could bring back one of my dead homies. I've been hit 13 times. That'll be 13 of my homies that'll be back. Birdman was shot in November, and the wounds are still fresh. He replaces his bandages with his grandma's napkins and tape he borrowed from our cameraman. This reality is a world away from hotel conference rooms, much less the Oval Office. Birdman and Little G have never heard of Daryl Scott, Pastor Tay Brown, or Torrance Cooks. I bet you that whole table gonna be full of everybody in suits and ties, man. They ain't gonna have nobody in there dressed like how we dressed. Why don't you think you get invited to meetings like that? How? They think we too ignorant. How? How is somebody like us gonna get invited to somewhere like that? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Who are they gonna see it? How, how we gonna get an invitation? The night before Daryl Scott's scheduled meeting, Scott's team sends out two conflicting press releases. The first calls the meeting a gang summit with a negotiated ceasefire. The second walks the promise of a ceasefire back. Less than an hour later, Scott postpones the meeting. This meeting happened on the impromptu, and it was because of the cancellation of uh, Dr. Scott and T. Cooks. A frustrated pastor, Tabron, invites people to a makeup meeting on the west side. No Southsiders or Trump associates in sight, or gang members. Xing out the Donald Trump syndrome and, you know, stop jumping on the bandwagon that Donald Trump is this monster and he hates black people. You know, we need to know for ourselves. And, and that's, that's where I am right now. Back in Cleveland, Pastor Daryl Scott prepared to make things right and reschedule the meeting. There's been some confusion around what this meeting would look like because, you know, it began at the Black History Month table with it sounding like Trump might actually sit down with top gang thugs from Chicago. And then there was a release that said that there'd be a ceasefire <laughs> and immediate job openings for the kids. Where are we now? Ceasefire? If the Lord Jesus Christ descended from heaven right now, that would be hard for him to do. At any point when you consider, for some people, the, the life or death stakes here and the complicated geography of the city sh of Chicago. And I'm learning that. That's a, learning. It's a learning process. I, mean, I didn't know. So do you, ever, do you ever feel like, damn, maybe I bit off more than I could chew here? No, you know why? Because I'm not trying to grandstand. I'm not trying to showboat. And my motives are pure. Nearly three months after his promise to the president, Scott held the meeting, this time within walking distance from the White House at the four-star St. Regis Hotel. Pastor Scott, what's your name, man? President Trump is unpopular in the black community, and he wants to help. He wants to make good on his campaign promises, and if I got anything to do with it, he gonna come through for everything he said he's gonna come through for the black community. In the room, there was a mix of pastors. I have churches in Africa, Haiti, and one in Canfield, Ohio. Businessmen. I own a pharmaceutical company in India, 178 employees. We make genetic oncology drugs. And friends of Trump and Scott. Uh, we're here to really take action and make change. So thank you for taking the action of, of coming here to DC. Seated across from six Southsiders from Chicago, Pastor Tebron didn't get the invite and Torrance Cooks missed his flight that morning. The conversation went on for five hours. You know, in the streets, they say, put up or shut up. We put up and we here. We got to bring home hope. Yeah, that's right. Because You got to go our, back with a good report. Not just a report, because because of we've restructured the meetings. You got to remember in a ghetto where people are poor, cynicism is heightened. Man, that ain't going to happen. Man, what's up with this? So we have to bring something back. The Chicagoans wanted money for nonprofits, housing, economic development, and programs to keep kids off the streets. What they received was a promise that there'd be another meeting. What's important for us is establishing next steps. 
And I always said this wasn't the last meeting. I said it from the very beginning, the first time they pounced on me about saying I was engaging with some people from Chicago. I said, this ain't the first, last meeting, this is just the first meeting. In Chicago, waiting on promises and processes means more people dead. Over 70 people have been shot in Chicago since the meeting. Everybody would have say, put the guns down, put the guns down, but it's impossible to put a gun down where this side don't kill somebody I grew up with, or this side don't kill my brother, or this side don't kill my sister, or, you know what I'm saying? Can't you just decide I'm not going to retaliate? How? If somebody was to kill somebody that was close to you right now, what would you do? I have no idea, you know to be saying? completely honest. And then it's like, how could you go in a courtroom and point this man out on you in the street yourself? Right, so, so at what point do people say, like, this is just too much? It can't be too much, because you're in too deep now. 